guy. Welcome back to our YouTube channel. Guys, we feel like we owe you a little situation update. By the way, we'll hike this whole video, so we, we couldn't decide on a spot. This entire area is just far too beautiful. We can lock in on just one spot, and hopefully the wind noise is not too big of an issue. We weren't planning on hiking. We're not really in hiking attire, but that's okay. Yeah, uh, look at these <laughs> shoes. And I meant for hiking. Anyway, we feel like we owe you a little bit of an explanation. We have not posted any videos other than um, property tours, walkthrough videos, finalizing new construction, things like that. Michon and I took a vacation earlier this year. What was it? Middle of May? Mm -hmm. Beginning of May. And ever since we got back, we've been playing catch up. We have been literally slammed with work for which we're super grateful to all of our awesome clients and a lot of our clients are subscribers. So you're probably watching it if you're watching it. Thank you so much for putting your trust in us. We appreciate that. However, that had put a damper on producing new content. So we feel like we owe you the a little little situation update. Everything that's going on with us, everything that's going on with our team. We had to lean on our team pretty heavily to get through these times, especially while we're gone. And we will be incorporating a lot more of our team in helping with all of our transaction and making sure that no matter no matter what, we're able to have somebody here to assist you guys. So <clears throat> Our vacation was pretty cool, and if you watch this video to the very end, you will uh, see what that was like. We're also curious to see what kind of what kind of content you guys are interested in. Um, this guy has very squeaky brakes. Very. Anyways, um, what kind of content you guys would like to see more of? We're really curious. Just drop it in the comments below, and just let us know. You know, I'm sure that the house tours get boring or maybe you like them or maybe you want to see more of what St. George has to offer or literally anything. We're up for for any advice. Yeah, do you, do you want to see local restaurant reviews? Do you want to know more about our real estate market? Are you interested at all to see what we're doing? And by the way, there's I'm really, really bad at keeping secrets. Should we tell them? You never told me what we were telling them. I did tell you what we were telling them. We're not telling them. We have something really oh, big. Yeah. Oh yeah, she's <laughs> see, she's so excited. Um, anyway, we are super excited to. I don't know. Is it a good time to announce it? Might as well. You're not very good at keeping secrets either. No. So we've got something really, really big. We just closed on a lot and we will be building a house. This home will be available for sale. This is not the first build. We help a lot of our clients with new construction. In fact, we actually pretty much specialize in building new construction. And this will be a first build of our own. We're super excited about designing this home and pretty much just building it from uh, from the ground up. This property will be located in Dixie Springs. It is a beautiful area. It is really close to Sand Hollow and all the exciting things that Southern Utah has to offer. You're two minutes from the lake, Sand Hollow. You're less than five minutes away from one of the most beautiful golf courses. You're like less than 30 minutes away from Zion National Park. You're five minutes away from getting on your side-by-side -side or whatever and going out and yeah you, you, if you live in that area you're gonna need a large garage so the garage is a must right like you, most people most of our clients a lot of our clients are buying garages with homes attached to them because there's just simply too many things to do too many toys to own that would require a big garage space and there's gonna be no shortage of that in that house so let us know if you guys are interested in seeing the whole build. We're thinking about doing a mini series that would take you through the stages of building this home. And I think it would also give you an insight on what it's like to build a home in this crazy market. 
we do have some worries. We do have some reservations about building in this market because of, you know, it's everybody pretty much all across the country is dealing with shortages of supplies, cost increases on supplies, and it's not a very clear cut uh, scenario with what's to come <clears throat> by the time we finish building it. But I think we're, we're up for the challenge. Mm -hmm. So if you guys are curious about seeing what's to come from the new build and what that's going to look like, drop us a comment below if there's anything specific about the process that you want to know. We're thinking about pretty much, it's typically about a nine month process. Uh, and if you have any additional questions about new construction, like perhaps you're thinking about building a home of your own uh, and you'd like for us to cover it in more detail, do let us know. Drop it in the comments below this video. Sorry, we're all over the place on this one, on yeah. this video. Yeah, we really are. We're all over the place all the time, but... Let's go see Let's go see if there's a view over here in Sheldon. Let's go take a look so at this view. So it's um, 8.30 um, this evening. It's 82 degrees. There's a slight breeze. It's absolutely beautiful, perfect weather. Should we show these guys some drone footage of this? I think they would enjoy that too. Yes, yes. Oh my God, take a look at this. This is all of St. George right there. So this is the sugar loaf. Um, there's just fun things to go do in the evening. We'll grab a frozen yogurt, come out here and just sit and watch the sunset. And this is beautiful. If this wasn't the most random video on this channel, tell us. But right after this drone footage, we're gonna share what our recent vacation looked like. Journey of 3,000 miles begins at Walmart. I'm getting my butt kicked by allergies pretty normal for this time of year for me, usually about a day or two. Oh man. Uh, hello friends. We are getting ready for our annual Wisconsin trip. We're actually packed, loaded, and ready to go. You may see some blue tape behind me because we literally never stopped working and we're about to leave town for nearly two weeks, week and a half. We'll continue to work from the road but our responsibilities never stop. So we had to stop here and do a walkthrough or blue tape inspection. Which blue tape inspection in real estate means you just go through and you, you point out all the flaws to the builder so they have opportunity to fix things prior to our clients taking occupancy of this place and having to deal with long punch lists. So Michonne's usually an absolute pro at this and I just follow along. <laughs> The level of her OCD is much higher than mine. But to give you guys an idea, it is a beautiful home, but just needs a couple of couple of touches. Victor, Idaho, here we come. So, we are somewhere in the middle of nowhere, Wyoming, about 190 miles away from Grand Teton on the 
the way to our destination. And let me tell you one cool thing about pulling a house with like literally two bathrooms behind you, it does have two bathrooms, is that Michonne can go and pee anytime, anywhere. And sometimes you get to stop at some really beautiful waysides. See these guys. Did you pee? What? Did you want to pee? Uh, it's okay. Actually, let me look at my other shoes on. I'm freezing to death. Our first stop was at Fireside Buffalo RV Park. We stayed here last year and we absolutely loved it. The location was super convenient because it's right in the center of Jackson Hole, the Grand Tetons, and Yellowstone National Park. As you can see, there's still snow on the ground, so when we arrived in the middle of the night, it was absolutely freezing. We experienced camping and frigid temperatures for the first time, but the views are 100% worth it. If you're passing through this area on your way to Yellowstone, this is perfect because you could hit Grand Teton National Park and then pull right into Yellowstone. And these campsites are perfect too. We made it to Grand Teton, our favorite RV park and the breakfast of champions is about to take place. Look at this. Pretty excited for this. How can I help you? He's like, if you could just uh, pass me the beefs, it would be great. Okay. You enjoy that. He's like, oh, I, I, I see you still have the full plate. <laughs> <laughs> the bulldog tax. Is he still watching me? Because <laughs> I feel like he's watching me. <laughs> what do you want? What, what do you want? We're all out of steak. <clears throat> oh, there you go, meatball. It got text down below. Would like another slice over here, please. He's like, I'll take it carefully this time so I don't miss it. Wait, did you find that piece down there? Absolutely incredible. Wyoming is such a beautiful state. Which state do you think has the greatest nature? The most vast landscapes? Yeah. I haven't been as many places as you, but I think Colorado is beautiful. Yeah, Colorado is pretty cool. Um, Utah, of course, that's why we live there. I mean, this is beautiful, but I can't do the snow. Yeah, it's too damn cold, but Wyoming is just so wild. I could totally see ourselves living here. Going right. We are en route to Yellowstone. Last time we passed three, or we were both so mad that we didn't get a chance to like actually go to Yellowstone. But this time, we just left our trailer behind. So today we're spending pretty much a whole day just driving around the area and uh, being tourists. This is incredible. <laughs> This looks like a fly fishing commercial. What is How insanely wild is that? You guys fly fishing. I'm gonna let Michonne drive so I can capture some of this. There's still snow on the ground. This is wild. That's beautiful. 
So if anyone ever wondered what it was like to see worlds from my eyes, this camera angle is basically what I see. Never a terrible view, she's always with me. <laughs> oh yeah, the view behind her is pretty cool too. Wow. Check out these views of the Grand Teton Lake. These views are absolutely mind-blowing. Like I've never seen anything like this before. It was really cool that we showed up early enough in the season that there was still snow on the ground. Usually our Wisconsin trip doesn't happen until later, so it was a great combination of beautiful blue sky and white snow on the ground and green trees. Just lots of uh, contrast. Look at this guy. You see that bear right there? Right behind that tree? That's wild. I've never seen one that close before. Wow, <laughs> And it's easy to see because he's on the white snow. Yeah. Other times it'd be hard to like see he's clear a in the forest. Brown bear. That's so cool. Did you boys see the bear? Did you see the bear? Did you see him? What do you think? I think you're the most excited one. I've been waiting my whole life. <laughs> he was just a little baby. He's so smoky, the bear. I wonder where his mom is. When we made this trip last year, we drove right past the antler arches in downtown Jackson Hole. This is literally how most of our road trips happen. I drive right past something and then Michonne points and says we were supposed to turn five minutes ago. I mean, we'd never, last year was the first time that we had drove through and once I saw the arches, I'm like, oh, I've been wanting to visit here and take a picture here. And Nick was on the phone with, with a client, a very important phone call and I'm tugging at his arm saying, pull over, we need to take a picture. So um, I actually did some research and the first arch was built in 1953 and then it took off and typically um, these arches would have to be rebuilt every 40 to 50 years. Um, each arch is constructed with a metal frame and the metal frame around it has a mosaic of elk horns uh, composed of 10 to 12,000 pounds of antlers. It took a lot of work to build this. I can't even wrap my brain around that. That's insane. Yeah, Jackson uh, downtown, Jackson Square is very unique. It's a really cool little town. We uh, walked around and checked out some little shops. I don't care. trip in 2020 and Michonne was super disappointed because we didn't get a chance to go through Yellowstone. Yeah, I held a grudge basically the whole trip. <laughs> <laughs> this time we got to see the pooping buffalo as you can see in this clip. <laughs> you guys, I have never seen so much wildlife in such a short amount of time in my life. Me and the boys were absolutely loving it. 
And Meatball and Diesel were absolutely obsessed and glued to the window the entire time. Okay, one loaf at a time. Yeah, I don't care. If you're planning on visiting Yellowstone with your four-legged friends, you can definitely do so as long as they're on a leash and no more than a hundred feet away from paved areas. You can't take them on trails or let them wander around, but uh, it's truly like taking them to Disneyland. They didn't even get bark. No. There's absolutely breathtaking views everywhere you look in this entire park. And we were just driving through and I literally caught Gibbons Falls out of the corner of my eye and yelled for Nick to pull over that we had to go check it out. Yeah, we pretty much never do any kind of planning on the road trips because I feel like when you make plans, they typically fall apart. So a lot of this was just by the seat of our pants, but Gibbons Falls are like nothing we've ever seen before. The drop is pretty gradual and it's only 83 feet, but it looks pretty vast. I definitely don't freak out often. I'm just kidding. I freak out all the time and I totally and, freaked out when I saw this. Point so cool. fingers. Yeah, this was amazing. Check it out. This is pretty incredible. The water in these geysers gets up to almost boiling temperature and it's actually being warmed up by an active volcano that is under the entire surface of Yellowstone National Park. I could literally stare at this for hours. Great thing that we're not in like any real hurry on this cross country trip. Well, I mean, there's a little bit of a hurry. We do want to get to Wisconsin eventually, but we just drove halfway through the Yellowstone National Park to realize that the entire north side of the park is closed off because of snow. And there's no information about it on Google Maps. There's no information about it on Google. And when you try to call Yellowstone, you couldn't get a hold of anyone to ask any questions. So this is great. So we get to drive all the way back to Billings, Montana. So then we can head back east. It's all good. Montana is a beautiful state and we don't mind exploring it. What do you think about it, Meatball? There's no looking back, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> this is so cool. These guys are really just taking their time to cross. He's in no hurry. <laughs> Meepo, Diesel, look. Diesel, look. Do you see him? <gasps> That's a buffalo. He's a big guy. D, do you see the buffaloes? 
Oh my gosh, we have one right here. We both watching him look. There's a buffalo over there. Oh, we've got an incoming on the right. Do you boys see him? That's a buffalo. He's a big guy. Does he look tasty? Think. If you plan on visiting Yellowstone early in the season, aka there's still snow on the ground, you should definitely plan ahead, which we definitely didn't do. And that resulted in us getting lost, which set us back about five hours total lost in Yellowstone. Every so. route that we would see on the map that took us where we needed to go would be a dead end. So we'd have to reroute, go back, go back, couldn't get out. So here you see us getting close to the Billings, Montana exit out of the park. And then Michonne decided that we were determined to make it through the night. Yeah, I'm pretty stubborn. I wasn't about to lose five hours. I'm like, I'll drive through the night to get through this if I have to. So we kept on trucking all the way through South Dakota, even though we lost a spare tire on the way. Situation update. We decided to drive literally all night and finally made it to Wall, South Dakota, our all-time favorite camping spot. See the Badlands behind me as the sun is beginning to rise. Take a look at that. That is incredible. And this time Michon didn't want to do quite something like that. So we set up camp right over there. Time to finally catch some sleep and continue driving through most of the day tomorrow. to appreciate the magnitude of this place. Like driving through South Dakota, you usually see, I don't know, a couple hundred signs for it, but let me show you guys. So the store begins on that end of the block and it literally pretty much takes up the entire downtown of Wall, South Dakota. So if you're ever traveling through this part of the country, you have got to make a stop. They have five cent coffee, so for a nickel, you can still get a coffee. Five cents. <laughs> and ice cream too. Yeah, five cent ice cream too. It is literally massive. It takes up, I want to say eight city blocks. Okay. And you see ads for this place from like hundreds of miles. And look, as a church. Inside. Traveler's Chapel. You ever seen a chapel inside of a drugstore before? They have everything. Look at this, look at this picture on the This is so cool. It's just random pictures. It's a family riding an elephant. This is the family that owns the store, maybe? I don't know. I'm gonna look on the inside and see. It's the Halstead family. This place is so wild.
is a tidbit chilly, but bulldogs usually do better in cooler weather on longer walks because these guys are on hot. So many smells. So many smells, hot poppers. Look at this beautiful scenery. How awesome is that? As you can see, Arrowwood Resort and Campground in Chamberlain, South Dakota was absolutely incredible. Can you think of a more perfect place to pull over and camp? Our boys absolutely loved it, even though we did not feel comfortable ever letting them get off leash. Had plenty of things to put them in trouble. I'm doing, sad sir? that we only stayed one night. It was so pretty. Definitely on a bucket list to bring a camper and a boat here. We saw so many people that were pulling such crazy rigs. To find some coffee this morning. Check this place out. We're at Owl's Oasis. Who the hell's Owl? <laughs> <laughs> this place is kind of cool. Last Chance Saloon. Check out that buffalo. Oh yeah, we stopped over by the buffalo last time we were here. Rig's sitting nice and level. Makes drinks, groceries. This thing is like straight out of a western movie. Let's just go walk in. Yeah. See if they got any coffee. Ooh, the prime rib is looking good. For breakfast? Prime rib for breakfast, why not? Look at it. Access denied. Monday through Friday opens at three. Never mind. No prime rib for us. Let's just browse around this thing. Where are all those people? I don't know. They're just staying at the hotel next door. How do they park so far away? It's just good for them to exercise. <laughs> He's watching the truck. We just stopped for breakfast in Chamberlain. And this place is awesome. This food is delicious. We got our boys on FaceTime. We didn't park a truck like quite a ways up. Historic uh, downtown of Chamberlain, South Dakota. It's really cool. It's like a little old little western town. Check out this diner. Meatball is still keeping an eye on the truck. And I've got some bacon in my hand. Let's go spoil our boy with some bacon. This is way cool. See if he gets excited. I don't know if you guys can see this. Oh, meat! <laughs> I can see your ears from here. I'm bringing you bacon. I'm bringing you bacon, buddy. I got you the bacon. Your ears are so big. It was so awesome to finally make it to Wisconsin and get to see my parents. Unfortunately, I don't get to do this often, typically about once a year, if not less. And a lot of things about Wisconsin are pretty normal to me as I spent a lot of time there, but they were pretty unusual for Michon. Well, I spent, you know, my whole life growing up in southern Utah, and the weather when we went was beautiful. I loved it. But I have never seen so many lakes and swamps. And I also thought it was kind of odd that all the properties didn't have um, block walls or fences around them, but Wisconsin had so many beautiful parks and lakes and we loved it there. I've been driving for, how long have I been driving for? About an hour and a half. Finally crossed over into People's Republic of Minnesota. This wayside just outside of La Crosse, Wisconsin is beautiful. Diesel keeps pulling me in circles. These guys had to pee. And we just parked on the big boy side. 
Look, we're almost the same length. We are right here. And Wisconsin is just across the Mississippi River. Flyover states, man. Nebraska. I don't know how people live here. It is cold, it is dreary, and just really rough looking. Let's take a look. Western sugar ain't so sweet. Not for me. On this episode of Ice Mother Truckers, we're gonna take you through Cheyenne, Wyoming. Take a look at this, folks. This is, what is it, May 10th today? It's a whiteout. It's a complete whiteout. And there's winter conditions for most of the state. Winter warnings. Winter warnings in effect. Um, what do these guys think about it? Do you guys care? <laughs> no. No, they don't care. They're snoring. Anyway, Wyoming is such a wild state. I believe we've experienced 100 degree temperatures in St. George already, maybe not quite, like it's been in the 90s all of last week. But on our road trip to Wisconsin and back, like we're heading back right now, this is the second time that we're driving through crazy winter conditions. Probably shouldn't be filming this and driving, but eh, YOLO, wish us luck. survived through another episode of ice trucking. We survived through terrible state of Nebraska. No offense to anyone that lives in Nebraska, but I, I don't understand how. Uh, Wyoming was, the entire state was a winter advisory. We started driving at like four in the morning. That's why I, we both probably look like grease balls right now. <laughs> But nonetheless, there's a huge grin on my face because we're back to God's country. Utah is beautiful. Thank you all so much for all of your love and support. We have tons of new content coming to this channel, including videos like 10 steps to purchasing your St. George homes, 10 steps to selling a St. George home. What it's like to build. What it's like to build in this crazy market. We have so much great content that is coming onto this channel. So if you're new around here, make sure to hit that subscribe button. If you're looking forward to seeing that content, give us a like. And of course, show us your support in the form of comments. Thank you all so much. Thank you, guys. We'll see you in the next one.